We welcome today Mabel Wilkinson, one of the first Wyoming librarians. She even took books to people on horseback. Thank you for having me. Yes, Mabel, you're quite famous, and thank you for visiting the Park County Library today. Happy it's birthday. our yes, it's our fifth anniversary in our new library. It's a beautiful space. Thank you, Mabel. We are very happy and fortunate to have it. I would just like to read a little bit from an account in the Cody newspaper back in 1916. When you first came to Cody, the reporter says, a representative of this newspaper made a call at the library building Monday morning. We found Miss Mabel Wilkinson, the librarian, busily engaging in arranging and cataloging the old and new books. It being understood, of course, that the Women's Club donated all of the books of the old library to the new. Miss Wilkinson is a pleasant lady to meet and is full of information and enthusiastic in the operation of the plans for the distribution of the books of the library so that all the people of the county may have the full benefit of the same. Miss Wilkinson is fully competent to have charge of this important public institution, being a graduate of the State Teachers College at Greeley, Colorado, taking the four-year course, attending a one-year course at Simmons College, Boston, for technical training in library work, one-year term in Earlham College, Richmond, Indiana, and same line, four years experience at the State Teachers College in Colorado as librarian, two years cataloging in the Newberry Reference Library in Chicago, the largest general reference library in the world. While engaged there, she organized the William Whiting Board Missionary Library of 6,000 volumes at Chicago, being the largest missionary library in the world. She also organized the Platte Valley Library Association at Wheatland, Wyoming, which is supported by the people of Platte County and is one of the best in the state. Starting with your Platte County experience in Wyoming, what was it like to be a traveling librarian back in 1915? I always encountered a warm welcome. People were so hungry for books, newspapers, reading them until they fell to shreds. Can you recall an especially difficult or exciting visit for us? Well, they were all interesting. Uh, the weather was a factor, of course, hail, snow, tornadoes. Um, there were no accurate maps at the time. And once my horse Joker and I were lined up on a good road, well, we could find it fenced off by a homesteader. I had many a meal on those diversions with my patrons. Uh, I ate some very interesting things as well. We understand you were the first librarian for Cody's Carnegie Library. Can you tell us a little bit about your welcome here in 1916? Well, it was a beautiful May day, May 16th. Um, the women's club served lovely wafers, tea, coffee. Dr. Lane spoke. Indeed, everyone in town came. They were so excited at the expanded and beautiful space. But you didn't stay long in Cody. In December, you left. Why did you leave? Well, I am primarily an organizer of a collection. And in addition to the 1135 volumes bequeathed us by the Women's Club, the Board of Trustee purchased another 600 and some volumes. And it doesn't take a qualified person all that long to organize a 1700 volume collection. So I felt my work here was done, and I had other obligations elsewhere to me. Would you like to sit down and have some cake? Well, yes, thank you. You often quote the requirements for a Wyoming librarian to be learned in her field, but also get along with Western people, 
ride and drive as well as pack a horse, follow a trail, shoot straight, run in an automobile, and be able to rough it whenever necessary. Looking around you, do you think Wyoming librarians still need those qualifications? Oh, I think they do indeed. People are still the same. Uh, Wyoming librarian will be asked all kinds of questions and have to meet the demands of her patrons. And in order to do that, she must be mentally agile and at times physically agile. Would you miss the old days if you were a librarian today? I see a little difference. A librarian's job is to make knowledge available to people and if you don't have it on the shelves or it is not in the stacks, it is incumbent upon you to do your very best to obtain it elsewhere. I, I think it is quite the same. What amazes you most about libraries today? I like the bears at this library. <laughs> we like them too. What do you, how do you feel about the internet? I think it is just yet another tool for learning as a scroll led to a book and a book leads to electronic uh, venues for learning. Do you have some advice for the Park County Public Library in Cody? Oh, yes, indeed. In fact, I came prepared to quote from the Powell Tribune in an interview I gave May 28, 1916. I believe librarians must be absolutely vigilant in defense of their tax mill. To it I say, to all who are able to read from the cradle to the grave, this means an unlimited educational opportunity. If you wish to avail yourself of it, your schools reach only a small part of the people directly, yet your school tax is enormous in proportion to your library tax. For the sake of your children, and the children of your friends, if you haven't any of your own, you willingly and unquestioningly pay a school tax. On the other hand, the library reaches all who are able to read all ages, all classes, supplying them impartially with the very best available material on every subject. If we haven't the material in stock, we'll get it for you if it is in our power at the earliest opportunity. Well, thank you, Mabel. I appreciate those words of wisdom.